Hi folks, in this video I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the three major parts of eukaryotic cells, but we're primarily going to focus on the cytoplasm and cytoskeleton. The last video for this week will cover the nucleus and the endomembrane system, um, all of which are geared toward producing proteins. And then next week, after we've had our first exam, we'll pick up with the structure of the cell membrane and how material is transported into and out of the cell. So eukaryotic cells, as I said, have three main areas. The first is the cytoplasm. Um, it is a gel-like material um, inside the cell membrane. Um, it's what the organelles are embedded in. It's the site of metabolism, of most metabolism in, in our cells and in our bodies for that matter. Um, and it contains um, a set of structures that are referred to as the cytoskeleton. The second area is the nucleus and the endomembrane system. And the third is the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is um, the boundary that separates the water in the cytoplasm and the chemistry inside the cell from the water and the chemistry that occurs outside the cell. And it's primarily made of phospholipids. We'll talk a lot more about that next week. Okay, so there are two terms that sometimes students find confusing, cytoplasm and cytosol. Cytoplasm means cell stuff, cytosol means cell solution. So the cytosol is water um, with dissolved monomers, other small molecules, ions, and certain um, water-soluble proteins. The cytoplasm includes the cytosol as well as the cytoskeleton. And in this image, what we're looking at are primarily cytoskeletal proteins. We'll talk more about the cytoskeleton in a minute. Um, as well as some of the large proteins that are dissolved in the cytosol. All right, so the cytoskeleton. Um, the cytoskeleton has a lot of different components to it, or a lot of different features. So it's involved in um, the shape that a cell takes, and as you guys will learn throughout this course, different kinds of cells have different shapes. When we first learn about them, we're just sort of looking at blobs, um, but in fact, different cells have different functions, which means they're gonna have different structures. Um, cytoskeletal proteins, so they, they're structural proteins, they give the cell a particular shape. Um, they're involved in either anchoring or helping to move organelles within the cell. Extensions from the cytoskeleton in the form of cilia and flagella um, are involved with cell movement or the movement of material across the surface of a cell. Um, there are also a set of extent proteins that extend um, out of the cell and, and are connected to proteins from other cells. And that's what allows cells to bind to one another. Um, and reorganization of the cytoskeleton is what allows cells that, um, other than sperm, that can move on their own to do so. So, The largest of the cytoskeletal proteins are called microtubules. Um, so micro means small, you've got um, like tube, right? And the U-L-E means tiny. So these are tiny, tiny tubes. Um, they're proteins, right? Which means they're made of amino acids. Flagella 
which is the plural, a single one is called a flagellum, um, always occur singly in a cell. And as far as I'm aware, the only flagella um, that exists in humans are the tail on sperm. Um, cilia, on the other hand, are which are shown in yellow in this micrograph, are sh very short microtubules, but they have a, a lawn-like quality. So you have a whole lot of them protruding from the surface of the same cell. And they're used to um, move material across the surface of a cell. So what we're looking at is actually a section inside the oviduct or the fallopian tube. The egg is moved through the fallopian tube by the beating of the cilia toward the uterus. Sperm, poor guys, swim upstream. All right, then we have cell-cell junctions. These, again, are proteins that um, stick out of the cell and allow cells to connect to one another. Um, they are part of what allows multicellular organisms to build tissues. So our cells can stick to one another and form tissues because of these three types of junctions, right? A junction is an intersection or a joining place. So we have adherence junctions, think adhesive, tight junctions, think zipper, gap junctions, think essentially um, a channel from one cell to the next. All right, so adherence junctions are used to mechanically attach cells that are next to each other. So at the top here, we've got a bunch of skin cells, which is one place where these junctions are common right here, right? So if we blow that image up, um, we've got two cell membranes, which are the bright sort of purple blue color. Um, we have the adherence junction, which is really a pretty complicated structure. So we have a pro proteins, which are the green ones that are protruding from either side, and they're sort of essentially bolted in place. And they're also hooked over these rod-like proteins that run just under the surface of the plasma membrane. So this is a really tight connection between cells, um, mechanically tight, as opposed to tight in terms of fluid. Tight junctions are very much like zippers, um, but they're zippers that don't allow water to pass from one area to another. So these kind of junctions are really common in the bladder, for example, and in the digestive tract, right? You don't want urine leaking between the cells that make up the inner lining of the bladder um, because urine is waste. One needs to dispose of it. So again, the plasma membranes are shown in the purple-blue color and the tight junction proteins are shown in bright green. Tight junctions are an awful lot. Um, if, you, if you've ever looked at um, a quilt or a comforter that has quilting, where multiple layers of fabric are sewn together. Um, it's a very similar kind of structure. Last but certainly not least, we have gap junctions. So gap junctions allow for communication, direct, direct cell to cell communication. And what I mean by, um, what I mean by that is, that the, the two cells, which in this 
image or the cell membranes or plasma membranes are shown as two-tone blue, right, with the space in between them marked, it's intercellular space. These proteins essentially form a pore between one cell and the next. So it's a, essentially a core. And what that does is it allows the rapid passage of ions from one cell to the next. That is absolutely critical in certain parts of the nervous system and also in uh, cardiac muscle, the muscle in our hearts. All right, so functions of the cytoplasm and the cytoskeleton, right? Cytoplasm is site of metabolism. Or the cytosol is. Um, it anchors. <clears throat> it's part of what anchors the organelles, which is what we're going to talk about. And in the next video, the cytoskeleton is involved in a number of different types of movement and extensions of the cytoskeleton are involved in connections or junctions between cells.